Well, good morning, everybody. Here I'm down the, in the uh, end of Young's Crossing this morning. Just a lovely little spot you drive, probably drive past it without even taking a sideways glance at it sometimes. Um, there's a busy piece of road that comes up out of the back of Petrie there. And <clears throat> it's not the most ideal location for for trying to film something. There's a lot of traffic going up and in that road and trucks, so I do apologise if that uh, does become a bit of an issue, but sometimes small sacrifices. This morning, um, as I said yesterday, I finished up yesterday, was <coughs> we were, that Jesus was in total control. In the book of Revelation, it's a revelation about, about God, about, about God being in total control of, of everything that the book of Revelation is not a, a book to be scared of, for, particularly for Christians, but um, it is to be scared of if you're against God. Um, and so in that vein, we're going to look at the seals. So I mentioned yesterday that, that John was um, fearful. He was, he was weeping and, and, and gnashing of teeth, I guess, <clears throat> because at that time, no one was found worthy to open this scroll being held by the Almighty in his right hand until Jesus enters the room. And so Jesus, who has all authority because of his, his commitment and his love to us, because of his willingness to go to the cross, because of his um, willingness to, to die on our behalf, to pay that penalty of sin, that we had no hope of ever paying. He is found worthy. They sing a new song in heaven. You are worthy to open the scroll. It, it, it is you. Worthy is the lamb who was, who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. You know, Jesus is worthy. And so Jesus reaches out, <clears throat> takes the scroll, and it's he that opens the seals. So Jesus is in control. He knows what he's doing. And so he, he takes the scroll and he breaks the first seal. And a lot of people are scared of the seals and the trumpets and all of those things because some of them describe catastrophe and disaster. But this affects those who are standing in opposition to God through all of this the breaking of the seals, the trumpets, the bowls, the plagues, all of that, God's people are comforted and walked and looked after and encouraged through, through that time. And so the first seal is broken, and this is the beginning of what others have described as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These are the, the first four seals that are, that are broken, and the horses ride. But I see them as an encouragement because I also, while they, while they do describe uh, era and history and, and prophecy of the, in, in Christendom, they also can describe us in our own personal spiritual relationship. And I'll explain as we go. The very first seal is broken. And, um, pardon me, I watched, John says, and the first seal of the seven seals was broken. And the elder says to John, come and see. Come and look at this. I want you to, I want you to see this. Now, if he says this to his most beloved, if this is said to, to John, then the same is for us. Come and see. Look into this. I looked and I saw a white horse standing there. Its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head. And he rode out to victory with many battles and to gain the victory. And I've heard lots of different descriptions about how this is terrible, this is, this is the beginning of war and, and sorrows. But that's simply not true. It's not about destruction, it's about construction. Because nowhere do we find in Scripture evil being described with a white colour or a crown of victory. That's only attributed to white robes and, and, and crowns are only attributed to those either connected to or Jesus himself, those connected to Jesus or Jesus himself. So this is, this is a positive sign. And this is the gospel. You know, Jesus 
wins the victory on the cross. And that good news goes to the world. It goes and it flies. And the gospel goes right firstly through the Roman Empire and then globally the gospel is still gaining victory. It may seem in retreat in our more developed and enlightened world. But in, in countries where the gospel hasn't been heard and where there's impoverishment and persecution, the gospel thrives. The gospel is exploding and it's victory. And there was a time in, in Earth's history when that gospel first took off and it rode out in victory. The whiteness, the pureness of the gospel and it convicted souls and souls were one and the church grew and was added to daily and, and it multiplied and exploded through the Roman Empire. Same thing happened to you and I. When we first hear the gospel message in our heart, it wins a massive victory. We are touched with its purity. We are exposed to the passion of Jesus and it gains a victory. And when we accept the victory of Christ, we are given that crown. We are given the crown of, of victory. And as we'll see over the next few days, though, something happens to the gospel message. The same thing that happens to you and I. So you and I have gained a victory. We'll leave it there at part one of this part of it, where the gospel has gained a victory in our heart. But what happens next? We still get to determine whether we're in or out. So the white horse rides. The gospel gains victory and traction. And we've got to thank Jesus for that. Let's pray together. Father, on this beautiful morning with the sun out and the birds and the fish jumping down there in the creek, I just pray, Lord, that the thing that's jumping most in our heart is the gospel message. The thing that is touching us and giving us passion, winning victory for us moment by moment, Lord, is the gospel is the sure knowledge that Jesus, you did indeed die for our sins, that it wasn't a, a wasted uh, effort, it wasn't a, a thing that's just been made up to comfort and soothe men. The gospel is real and it's living and it's victorious in our hearts when we allow it to be, Lord. And when it's in our hearts and it has victory there, Lord, it gives us the power through your Holy Spirit to give victory to others. And we just pray for that, Lord. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to help others find the victory that we have found. So, Lord, in this day ahead, there are many who we will encounter that, Lord, we need to just be able to share, whether it be through word or deed. And we just pray for that strength and that courage. So in the day ahead, Lord, just guide us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, as we leave each other this morning, open up the word. Find the victory of the cross find the victory of the gospel and find it in your hearts. And until we see each other tomorrow, take care, God bless, and I'll see you then.